Morning, guys. What do you think, Odie? This morning, Odie and I are working on a Delco generator off of a John Deere two-cylinder. And I kind of wanted to share what I'm finding, maybe a little troubleshooting advice. So at this point, I have the voltage regulator pulled off because a lot of the problems I was seeing with this generator are a result of it not making good connection. Now you want to play one way or another. So basically this is your field wire and the field wire is the backside of the wires that go around the poles to make the magnetic field in the stator. And each side of the field is connected to this post or this post. The back side of the post is also your generator terminal. So basically the field is connected to the generator terminal on one side. So it will get, say if this is a negative ground generator, it will get the battery voltage on that side. The other side of the field, the voltage regulator connects to ground as needed to regulate the voltage. So basically, if you wanted to make this generator get full output, you can jump this guy of the field to ground, which is what I was doing with this but as I was playing around with it. If you jump that to ground, that means that all the power that the armature makes will be on this side of the field, and this side will be ground. So you have a full, say, 12-volt difference in the field, and this generator will be going full out. The way it works and it regulates it is it's monitoring the voltage that the armature makes on this wire and if that goes above 14 or wherever it's set at it opens this wire from ground so as soon as you quit having current go through that field winding there's not as much magnetic field it decreases the voltage goes down it senses that shorts this back to ground and makes more voltage again so the the problems i was seeing and what i've been tracking down with this generator are a lot of connection problems and corrosion so i started out by i took this all apart basically you pull these two bolts out this end cap pulls off you can pull the stator off take the nut off take the pulley off and then i machined the commutator put new brushes in basically all standard stuff you can see on youtube nothing nothing crazy there put it all back together and still not really generating and the way i'm testing this is i just have a a 3 8 impact with a 15 16 and i'm able to to turn this thing not super fast but i guess fast enough that it should work i mean i'm seeing it charge i'm seeing it get to 12 volts at times but it seems intermittent and the first problem i'm noticing is this brush on this side is the negative brush or i'm sorry the ground brush this is a positive ground tractor so it's kind of confusing i think to refer to it as positive and negative i would say this is the ground side brush this is your battery side brush so the way they insulate it is there's like a thin piece of paper in there you can see let me get a light there's basically a thin piece of paper in there that keeps it off of the frame of the tractor or of the generator you can see it right down in there in this side it's bolted straight on but it's it's riveted it's not bolted that's what this rivet is here and it's not making great connection so one thing i was able to do was take a, a jumper wire and just hook right on that fresh copper wire on that new brush and just hook it to ground and make sure that that side of the armature is grounded properly and that seemed to help the way i'm testing this stuff though guys is i'm taking just a regular multimeter here I put it on the resistance setting and basically what you can do is just compare it you know say say I take and I go to ground and I go to that brush see how it's saying 0.1 ohms so you know you're making good contact now so whatever messing around with all those connections I've done evidently helped but if you do this and then you're seeing say 50 ohms you know it's not making good connection and you got a problem there so the ground side brush should have good connection to ground the positive side brush this guy obviously you don't want this copper wire touching the chassis because it's the hot side so what you can do there is it should have very low resistance from this wire here to your 
armature terminal, which is on this voltage regulator, the center voltage regulator tap. So if you take that guy there, sorry, I'm trying to run the camera and everything here, and go to this wire, we're getting 0.3 ohms, so we're in good shape there, making good connection. The next problem I noticed was, I think when this tractor was painted, the generator was painted with the voltage regulator off. So this was all painted. Well, the voltage regulator has to make good connection to this ground because it's grounding the field wire through this contact. It grounds the field wire to the chassis to make power. So you can take your own meter there once again and just check. Basically, if, if nothing's hooked up, nothing's running. This should have good con, con, uh, good continuity to ground. So, even with it just sitting there, I wire wheeled that surface. So, let's see what it does. If I take, if I take this lead, stick them in there, and I go to ground. See, I'm still on an open circuit. So we know we got an issue here. One way or another. No, I didn't even screw that back on yet, so that may be part of the problem. But this this is basically my troubleshooting method, and that's all I wanted to show is how I'm trying to track down these connection errors. So this this goes through this set of points here. The small wire you see here is coming from the generator lead. So basically, if the generator lead, which is this positive side of the armature, if that makes 14 volts or wherever the cutout is, it will pull, it will make enough magnetic field here to pull this guy down and that opens the field contact. So now, like I said before, voltage or current can no longer flow from field to ground. Therefore, that magnetic field collapses. And if you don't have a magnetic field on the outside and the stator, you're not going to be making any power on the armature wire. So once that goes down, once this voltage goes down, this magnetic field decreases, that contact, oh, or, well, it goes back to, because it's normally closed, it goes back to being closed. Now field is shorted to ground again. It will make more magnetic field. This will build up again. And that's basically the cycle. And from what I understand, these things kind of like flutter. I don't even think you can see it because it's so close to being closed. They're basically fluttering as this thing runs to control the voltage. This set of contacts over here is what is both your voltage cutout, it's reverse current cutout, I think is what it's technically called, and that's the inside. You can see this very small wire on the inside. What that does is when this thing shut off, your battery is always hot. Like this is directly connected to the battery. This doesn't have anything to do with your ignition switch. So when this is hot, this is sitting here open. You can see there's a gap in those points right now at the bottom. So this is sitting there, you know, 12 volts, 6 volts, whatever it is, sitting there hot, hooked to the battery, and this is hooked to your armature. If that's, if you push on this and, and close it and you have power here, it will actually spin the generator. It will be a motor at that point. So if that was on the tractor and you had a belt on this and it can't turn, you're just draining the power down real bad. So the way that they solve that issue is if there's not 12 volts here on the generator terminal, these contacts open. Now this and this are not connected anymore. So basically you have hot power here, nothing's happening here because the tractor's off. As soon as this thing's spinning and you make 12 volts here, you'll get 12 volts on that center coil and it will close this guy. And then when that's closed, these two are connected. So now your generator, 14 volts, whatever it's making, will be connected to the battery and it'll charge your battery. The big coil on the outside, that's your current limiting coil. And it's spun the other way. So if you can see it's a big wire because it's actually carrying all the power that the generator makes. As that power from the generator, from the armature, comes out, it's through this, spins around that and makes the magnetic field. If there's too much magnetic field from the current, basically an excess current, it's going the other way and it will open this contact back up. So it protects the generator. So if the generator is, is overcharging because there's, say, there's a short on the tractor side or, you know, basically this battery is shorted to ground, it's making a ton of current. In order to protect the generator, all that current will force this contact back open. So therefore, these are not connected anymore. And in the same way, once that opens, that current stops, 
it'll try to close again, but the fluttering of this set of points here will protect it from having too much current go through it. So I kind of just wanted to give a basic overview of my understanding, kind of the, the dumbed down version of how this thing works. And Odie is mad. What? But anyway, that's, that's kind of my understanding. I'm just trying to, to chase down the different contact issues and see if I can get this working. Last night I had it kind of working. Basically I'd run over the drill. Sometimes this thing, this contact would pull down. But I was also, I was jumping the field to ground, basically simulating the full on. This should be controlling that, the right contact there. So I'm gonna try to get this all buttoned up and I'm just gonna chase down any corrosion problems by using the, the uh, resistance on this meter. So that's my method anyway. So these are the kind of issues that I'm finding here. Basically I'm tracked down to this set of points between the field terminal here and ground um, uh, I'm struggling to get good continuity there you can see I'm at you know 20 mega ohms or so and you can sort of narrow this down to see if I'm on this side of the points 0.4 ohms no problem as soon as I go on this side of the points so I can just basically go across these points if I go here to ground see right there I'm getting good connection 0.5 or 1.5 ohms I go back to field. It's weird. It's like there's a bad connection between here and here. Now, it seems like right now, the field contacts, I'm not making good contact there. And I'm just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning them with a dollar bill. Um, I bent this guy back a little bit because basically you could look from in there and see that they weren't hitting very squarely but you want to be careful of all this because if you move it around the tension of the spring balanced with the magnetic field from this winding that's what's setting the voltage so i don't know i don't know that i'm going to get this regulator to go i think the points like when i shine a light from behind them they're actually like hitting in multiple places I think the points have seen better days. So I'm going to put this thing back together and put it back on the tractor because I need to be able to run the tractor for right now. But I don't have much faith in it working. But I'm going to order a new voltage regulator. And at least we know we have everything in here. We have good contact because we check the continuity. We machine the commutator, put new brushes in. I changed the, the ball bearing on the front side of this. I did not worry about this bushing because it was not too bad a shape and I didn't want to deal with getting it out of there. But the I got the old $12 kit on eBay. Basically, you're going to replace this old wrinkly bearing. New brushes, give you this new bushing. I didn't deal with it. Probably a good idea if you want to change it. Clean this up, make sure your voltage regulator has good contact with the case and I don't know. I think uh, I think we've given it a pretty good overview. I cleaned the bottom of these guys. I just I just wanted to kind of give more of a basic description of how these work. They're not rocket science, but I, I feel like there's not a lot of basic descriptions on YouTube from what I could find. So there's a really good video a girl has explaining a generator and the and this is a Type A voltage regulator for airplane use. I'll link that in the description. That's kind of where I got the the gist of how this works. You'll see it shows these as three separate coils. Just keep in mind that what you're going to see, the left two coils, the current limiting, and the RCCO, I think it's called, circuit, they are combined on this one into this guy here. So it is the same thing that you'll see in that video. And that video does a great job of explaining it and showing the schematics of everything. So... That's where I got my info from and just trying to pass it along and what I've learned with this. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. And I think I'm ultimately going to need a new voltage regulator, but I hope I've showed the troubleshooting points. And where I'm down to on that is basically between here and ground, you should have no resistance, very low resistance. And if I push on the back of this, basically helping the spring to close that point, I push on it, I help it, I can get that down to like two, three ohms, but I don't think that's good enough. 
there's only about seven and a half ohms of resistance in the field as it is so i think you need to get that very close to zero same thing as when you put your jumper from here to ground and basically eliminate the regulator and give this thing full tilt mode so a good way to eliminate the regulator out of this is if you would put a jumper between field and ground that's that's basically telling this generator on full out and then check your voltage what it's making at the armature and the the voltage between here and here you know should be able to make at least 12 if this is grounded and that takes the regulator completely out of the equation but be careful doing that because i think if you keep this grounded it could take off you know i don't know what the what the limit is of the voltage this thing can make but yeah don't uh don't run it like that that's for testing only and i hooked this back up on the bench setup it's may look odd because this again this tractor is positive ground so i have positive hooked to ground i just went ahead through the negative terminal on the battery let's have this thing on 12 volts you want to go ahead and polarize your generator and this is basically what sets it as negative or positive ground basically you just jump from generator to battery and you'll see it'll turn it now that that's going see if i can hold this all and do this all with one hand i'll put that on the generator output and i'm going to run this thing with my handy dandy impact we're watching what the armature is making and with the rpm of this impact which i think is like 2000 ish we are able to make eight volts so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and put this thing back on the tractor because I think it turns more RPM than that on the tractor, but hey, maybe we're all good after all. Thank you for tuning in and i hope i've been somewhat a help i apologize that this isn't like all completed if i get a new voltage regulator or if this works i'll get that posted on there and see if i can help you guys out have a good one